I knew tech equipment from using it at previous institutions. I knew that tech equipment was a good company. It made good equipment. Um, and when I was researching what specifically equipment I needed and I knew I, that I would want, um, you know, you had everything that I, I needed. Um, and uh, it was, it seemed very user friendly. Um, and as you know, that has been true whenever I have the students do it, they're not confused. They know how to work the, the equipment. Yeah, everything's been working great. I haven't had any issues. Uh, the labs have gone well. The you know the the data that come from it to actually make sense. You know, we don't have to really talk too much about uh, apparatus error, equipment error, um, which is good. Uh, you know, yeah. So uh, I've been I've been really uh, satisfied with everything that we have. Well, I I actually prefer the flume. Because uh, that's that's more of my background. Um, so I, I have the your two and a half meter flume, um, and it's uh, yeah. So you know I love creating hydraulic jumps. Uh, you know, putting the the different uh, weirs in there and just you know, seeing that visualization uh, through that open channel flow. Um, to me, that's my favorite, um, and it and it becomes a great visual. You know, for students and really for prospective students, we have tours coming in. That's an easy one to set up and just, you know, show the students the kind of uh, cool things that we can do in this lab. Um, so yeah, so that's my favorite is the flume because uh, I'm an open channel uh, person. The, the college has been around for a long time. Um, engineering programs started in the late 90s with mechanical engineering and then um, soon added on electrical and computer engineering. Um, and then a few years ago, about five years ago, they started the civil engineering program. And I was, uh, I was the second faculty hired for the civil engineering. Uh, and my specialty is in the water resources uh, area of civil engineering. And so <clears throat> we had nothing. And so it was part of my task was to you know, outfit the labs uh, for uh, our classes and for our students. It's a generic civil engineering. Uh, so the students um, will graduate with a, you know, an introduction to all of the sub-disciplines of civil engineering, which includes structures and geotech and environmental and construction uh, and, uh, and surveying and transportation and then water resources as well. Um, so it's, there's a required course where they take a fluid mechanics and then there's a required course where they take a hydraulics and hydrology. Uh, and then there's an elective course if they are interested to take a more advanced uh, water resources engineering. Um, so it's it's built into the curriculum of the civil engineer. That you know, stormwater is particularly here on the east coast of America is is the is the big story. Um, so no matter what kind of project that a civil engineer would get into building and designing, they always have to think about stormwater. You know, so when it rains on your whatever it is that you're you're designing, you know, what do you do with that rainwater? Um, so being able to uh, to remove it from places that you don't want it, but not put it just directly into the stream, create some kind of <coughs> excuse me detention for that. Uh, so that that rainfall apparatus, you know, is a is a great tool uh, for those uh, students because that's going to be useful whether they actually specialize in water resources when they graduate or not. For those who actually want to specialize, you know, you can get more into depth on that, get into the design of those detention basins, the design of the outlet structures, which um, that uh, discharge over a notch uh, apparatus that I have from you all is a great uh, putting on those different weir shapes uh, to measure the flow. Um, that's been a great uh, tool for us. Uh, looking at uh, the pipe connections from the stormwater detention to the creeks, um, so, you know, those are the kind of designs that a civil engineer could do with water resource. There's also just the water supply. So once water gets uh, you know, cleaned at the treatment plant, then you have to distribute it to all of the users. Um, that's pressurized pipe uh, that goes to uh, all of those uh, residences and, and uh, in industry. 
Uh, so there has to be a design of that. And that's a complicated pipe design because it's not just a simple straight, just downhill. You have to you know, make a whole grid of pipes and keep them pressurized uh, for everyone. Um, uh, and then, you know, if you go elsewhere, I mean, those are the main ones here on the East Coast uh, for us that uh, students would get into. But you could get into um, river restoration as well. Um, so, you know, looking about, you know, how do streams erode their banks and how is that going to affect uh, property boundaries or uh, uh, ecological parameters in the river? Um, those are going to become more important to where, you know, that's a, a bigger issue. So unfortunately, uh, we are a bit space confined at this institution. We have um, basically one big lab room that I share with some geotechnical equipment and some structural uh, lab equipment. Um, and I'm kind of, you know, I have a little corner partitioned off uh, for us. You know, that's where I keep the big stuff. So the rainfall apparatus, um, the pipe wall apparatus and the flume, you know, those are harder to move around. So I kind of keep them uh, there. Um, the smaller stuff, because I have the hydraulic bench, um, and then all the things that, you know, the smaller ones that I can attach to that, you know, that's much more mobile. So I'll, I'll store them in there, but I can, I'll bring those into the classroom for demos during lectures, as well as uh, lab experiments uh, during the lab periods. Um, so I don't have to, to stay in the, the actual lab room. Bill has been my primary contact, <coughs> excuse me, so whenever I have questions, um, you know, he's been very responsive. Um, when I <clears throat> went to order the materials, both Bill and Cheryl uh, were there and they, you know, did a great job in, uh, in, in getting me set up, uh, helping me, uh, you know, uh, get the equipment in and get it set up and checking that it works uh, and everything. And, and if I needed to repair uh, or something real quick, or if I wanted to, you know, order a second uh, one, I did that for a couple of the, the smaller pieces. Um, yeah, they were, they were very quick and responsive. Um, so I, I, I have enjoyed um, the, the personal contact, to, the personal touch that uh, you all have brought to this. Um, yeah, and then, you know, the students who come in, whether they're prospective or actual students, you know, they've enjoyed the equipment because, um, you know, everything works well. Um, the, you know, the bigger ones, the pipe wall and the rainfall apparatus and the flume, those are big and impressive. And so they, they always make a mark. Uh, for that. So um, I, I think that helps sell this when, on some of the prospective students when they come in on a tour. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of you know, see there like, wow, look at that cool thing. <laughs> what I enjoy about the user guide is that they, are, they offer you multiple options for using the equipment for various tasks. And so it's not, you're not just set in like, oh, you have to do this one thing. You know, there's like three different things that you could do or, you know, more with this equipment. And I think the user guide does a good job. I like the fact that they give some kind of sample results. Uh, so you kind of know what to expect uh, from that. Um, they, they, you know, can set you up with a bit of a template on how to collect the data as well. Um, so that provides, uh, you know, a, a, a way for me to tell the students, hey, you know, you know here's how you should kind of set up uh, your data collection table. And I can, you know, show them, you know, the kind of expected results. You should get a graph that kind of looks like this um, so they can see that. 